This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy, horror, mystery film called Odd Thomas. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Odd Thomas. A short order cook in a small town called Pico Mundo inherited an extraordinary gift from his mother. On the morning of August 14th, he sees Penny Callisto outside his apartment. She doesn't say a word to Odd, but he follows her anyway. Odd recounts that his father locked up his mother in an institution because he thought that she was insane, so Odd had to hide his gift to avoid the same fate. Soon, Penny leads Odd to a street where they come across Harlow Landerson, arriving in a convertible. After some pleasantries, Odd grabs Harlow's keys and points out that a woman's blood is in his pocket. When Penny touches his shoulder, Odd gets a vision of where the blood came from. Odd then accuses Harlow of killing Penny and collecting some of her blood. Harlow makes a run for it, so Odd chases after him. The two men end up in a house where a pool party is taking place. Odd soon catches him and slams him all over the place. When Harlow sees a boy upstairs, he runs after him in an attempt to take him hostage. However, Odd follows him and hits him in the head with a lamp. Harlow engages Odd in a fistfight in a last attempt to escape, but Odd knocks him down. Harlow eventually gives up after Odd smashes his head against a mirror. When Penny approaches Odd again later, he assures her that she's going to a place filled with kindness and wonder. Odd notes that the dead people he encounters never speak, and he has yet to learn why. As Penny disappears, Police Chief Wyatt Porter scolds Odd for the destruction that he caused at the house. Wyatt contends that they could have found another less destructive way to catch Harlow, but Odd argues that he had to stop him before he kills again. Before parting ways, Wyatt gives Odd a cover story so he wouldn't have to tell them about his psychic abilities. While Odd is walking home that night, he encounters faceless people wearing red and black bowling uniforms and asking for his help. The faceless people suddenly lift Odd and carry him to his apartment. However, an unknown figure guns him down. By the time they reach the building, only one man is left. The gunman hits Odd and the faceless man carrying him, but he manages to carry Odd to his bed. When Odd wakes up in the morning, he realizes that he had a premonition. While Odd is working at the diner, his girlfriend, Stormy Llewellyn, stops by for breakfast. Suddenly, a monstrous creature that only Odd can see enters the diner. Odd calls the creature Bodax. He once met another man who could see Bodax, but one of them killed him once they learned that he could see them. As the Bodak wanders around the diner, Odd pretends that he doesn't even see it as the creature lurks in front of him. Odd believes that the presence of a Bodak is a foreboding sign of bloodshed and mayhem. The Bodak doesn't cause destruction, but they feed on it. Soon, more Bodaks enter the diner to swarm around a man with hair that looks like mold. As Odd observes the man outside the diner, his co-worker, Viola Peabody, tells Odd about her strange dream. She shares that she saw her own face and was lying dead on the ground with another man next to her. When Odd asks what the man was wearing, Viola reveals that he had a red and black bowling shirt. Odd wanders into a mall as he looks for the man swarmed by Bodax. Soon, he ends up outside the ice cream shop where Stormy works. While talking with Stormy, he sees the strange man looking at a car display. After buying two gallons of ice cream, the man leaves the mall. Odd decides to follow the man to his own when he sees that the Bodax have suddenly stopped swarming around him. Odd found it strange because he knows that Bodax don't leave a man alone until the bloodshed is over. The man soon reaches his house, but he leaves soon after taking the ice cream inside. Odd breaks into his house to find out why the Bodax followed him. Odd deduces that the man has several friends when he finds different brands of cigarette butts on the ashtray. Suddenly, a gust of cold wind sweeps across the house and Odd sees spirits being pulled into a door. When Odd enters the room, he sees a ray of light coming out of a hole so he puts his hand inside out of curiosity. Odd immediately takes his hand out when a black substance coming out of the hole starts covering the room. He runs out of the room upon realizing that the Bodax are coming out of the hole. The hole turns into a vortex and tries to pull Odd into it, but he manages to leave the room and hide. Soon, a swarm of Bodax flies all around the house. A Bodak almost discovers Odd, but the creature leaves when it sees the other Bodax are gone. Stormy calls Odd to find out what he learned about the man. With the Bodax gone, Odd continues investigating while talking to Stormy on the phone. He finds several files of infamous serial killers and learns that the man's real name is Robert Robertson. Stormy starts referring to the man as Fungus Bob because of his strange hair. Odd suddenly hears someone arriving, so he tells Stormy that he has to get out of the house. Before leaving, Odd discovers that August 15th has been torn out of Bob's calendar. He deduces that Bob intends to murder people the next day when he finds a calendar page inside a folder with Bob's name among the files of other serial killers. Moments later, Odd sneaks out through the window as a man enters the house calling out to Bob. Two Rottweilers suddenly bark at Odd, so he hides on the roof until the man returns inside. That same day, Odd warns Wyatt about Bob while they have a barbecue at his house. When a new police officer named Bern Eccles arrives with his date, Lysette, Wyatt asks him to check Bob's DMV records. 
Not long after, Wyatt returns and tells Odd that Bob moved to town five months ago after inheriting money from his mother. Bob has a clean record so they can't arrest him for anything. However, Wyatt puts an officer on Bob's trail because he knows that Odd is never wrong. Later, Odd meets with Stormy to have a picnic at the belfry of a church. While Stormy is taking out the food, Odd sees Bob heading towards them, so they hide in the sacristy. Inside, they find another door, but Odd senses that Bob is on the other side, so he instructs Stormy to wait. As Odd looks outside the sacristy, Bob starts banging on the other door, so the couple flees from the church. Bob trashes the sacristy in anger instead of pursuing them. The couple soon contacts Wyatt to report that Bob is destroying the church while grabbing something to eat at the diner. Oz gives Odd a heart-shaped metal trinket that he requested. Odd asked Oz to make the trinket because he kept getting a vision of a bullet going through a heart. Later, Wyatt calls Odd to tell him that the church is trash, but Bob didn't leave a single fingerprint. That night, Odd and Stormy end up outside a bowling alley while following a psychic trail. Odd is perplexed that they ended up there. Stormy asks him if the alley had something to do with his dream, but Odd points out that the uniforms are different from the bowling shirts that he saw in his dream. When they go inside, they find out that the uniforms were recently changed from green and gold to black and red. Fearing that Bob would slaughter the employees at the bowling alley, Odd advises Wyatt to send an officer there to keep watch. When Odd and Stormy go back outside, Officer Simon Varner approaches them to ask him why he thinks Bob is dangerous. Since Odd can't tell Varner about his psychic powers, Odd claims that Bob got aggressive with him a few hours ago. Varner seems suspicious about his claim, so Stormy adds that Bob made advances towards her. Stormy notices the letters P.O.D. tattooed on Werner's forearm, so she asks what it means. Werner claims that he couldn't disclose it because it stands for something obscene. Afterward, Odd and Stormy go to Viola's house to find out what else she saw in her dream. When Odd asks her to visualize it, she discloses that she saw flashing lights. Then, she heard children's music, a roaring crowd, followed by gushing water. Viola felt like she was hit rapidly with a baseball bat and her hand slipped on blood. She staggers in shock when she recalls the numerous bodies around her in the dream. When Odd checks on Viola's daughters, he sees several bodaks hovering over them, but he doesn't tell Viola. Before leaving, Odd advises Viola to get out of the house without telling anyone where she's going. On the way home, Stormy expresses her concerns about Odd's safety, so he pulls over on the side of the road to calm her fears. Suddenly, they hear a woman screaming in the distance. Not far, Lysette is being chased by two Rottweilers. Soon after a dog lunges at her, two gunshots ring throughout the yard. When Odd and Stormy reach Lysette, they see a man with a gun crying as he explains that he shot the dogs. Soon, the police arrive and discover that Lysette was hit in the eye and tied up before she was hauled to the yard, where the dogs chased her. Wyatt notes that the man who shot the dogs is a teacher named Kevin Goss. Odd informs Wyatt that the Rottweilers belong to Bob, so Wyatt instructs his officers to look for Bob before leaving the crime scene. Odd gives Wyatt his trinket and advises him to wear it. Later, Odd notices a white van stopping outside Stormy's apartment. He surmises that Wyatt sent somebody to protect Stormy. When Odd gets home, he notices a gun on the floor and a light in the bathroom. Upon checking the bathroom, he discovers Bob's corpse in the bathtub. Odd realizes that someone is trying to frame him, so he deals with the corpse on his own instead of calling the police. After inspecting the corpse, Odd deduces that Bob has been dead for a while, concluding that Bob must have been a ghost when Odd saw him at the church. Odd surmises that Bob blames him for his death, but he doesn't know why. After wrapping up the body, Odd borrows his neighbor's car to hide the body in the gas chamber of an abandoned prison. He sees numerous boat acts on the road on his way home, so he stops by Wyatt's house. While Wyatt is about to eat pie with his wife, Carla, he hears the doorbell. As soon as he opens it, he gets shot three times. Odd soon arrives at Wyatt's house only to learn that he's been shot. When Odd gets to the hospital, Carla informs him that the trinket saved Wyatt's life, but one bullet penetrated his body. When Odd goes back to Bob's house to investigate, he learns that Bob has been browsing sites about building bombs as well as Satanism. Bob has also been looking at moving vans for sale. Inside Bob's refrigerator, Odd discovers severed teeth and fingers. As he's about to leave, Bob's ghost appears. Bob tries to punch him, but ghosts can't harm the living. However, Bob can attack him by throwing furniture at him. When Bob slams the stove against him, Odd immediately notices the gas leaking, so he jumps out through the window before the house blows up. Odd soon realizes that the vision of the bullet through the heart was about Bob not Wyatt, so he goes back to prison to inspect the corpse. When he looks at the wound, he discovers that the letters P.O.D. are tattooed on his chest. Odd concludes that Wyatt and Varner are working together and their tattoos stand for Prince of Darkness. He surmises that Varner killed Bob and tried to frame him. 
Odd then goes to the mall upon realizing that Varner will launch his attack there. Odd heads straight to the security surveillance room and grabs a baseball bat along the way. Upon reaching the room, he finds that the staff members are already dead. A man wearing a ski mask comes out, so Odd hits him in the head with the bat. When Odd discovers that the man behind the ski mask is Eccles, he concludes that he's also Bob's accomplice. Varner and Eccles prompted Bob's dogs to kill Lizette because she discovered their pictures at the mall with notations about their plans. Odd notices that Eccles is wearing his uniform beneath his bulletproof vest, so he concludes that they are planning to remove their vest after the attack to pretend to be heroes responding to the call. Odd soon realizes that the boat accidents swarm around Eccles and Varner because the boat acts know Odd can see them. Before searching for Varner, Odd grabs Eccles' firearm which only has four bullets. As he looks around the mall, Odd sees Viola and her daughters as well as the bowling alley employees. Odd immediately tells Viola and her daughters to leave the mall. Soon, Odd discovers that the children's music Viola heard in her dreams came from the carousel. The sound of the big crowd came from the TV showing a sporting event. Not long after, swarms of Bodak enter the mall through a portal. Panic ensues when a woman screams to alert people about someone holding a gun. People try to get out, but the automated security systems lock down the entire building. Soon after, the gunman fires his weapon outside the ice cream shop. Odd shoots the gunman three times as he runs towards him, but he misses. After the third shot, Bodak swarm around Odd to keep him from shooting the gunman. Odd struggles to wake his mate through the boat axe as the gunman reloads. He immediately shoots the gunman in the head though when he reaches him. Odd slowly approaches the ice cream shop, fearing that Stormy has been shot. He's relieved when he sees Stormy emerge from the counter but soon realizes that the attack is not over when he sees Lysette's ghost. When he removes the gunman's mask, Odd recognizes him as the teacher who shot Bob's dogs. Varner is still at large. Lysette leads Odd to the car park where he finds a white moving van. The back of the van is locked so he asks a man for help to break it. After opening the van, they discover that it's packed with explosives equipped with a timer that has less than three minutes left. As Varner walks out of the car park, a Bodak possesses him to alert to Odd's presence. Varner shoots Odd and hits him, but Odd manages to start the van and drive it out of the car park. Varner hangs on to the van as Odd drives away from the mall. Varner shoots Odd again, but he only grazes his forehead. When Varner gets inside the van, Odd jumps out before the van crashes into a ditch. The van explodes as soon as it lands. When Odd wakes up, he finds himself in the hospital with Stormy by his side. Carla informs him that Wyatt survived and concocted a story to keep his psychic abilities a secret. He learns that Eccles and Varner formed a satanic cult when they were teenagers. Then, they joined the police force to cover up their crimes. After meeting Bob and Goss, they came up with a plan to infiltrate a town and kill it slowly. Odd becomes a town hero for preventing hundreds of deaths. After leaving the hospital, he stays with Stormy in her apartment to forget about the ghosts, Bodax, and his job at the diner. The couple enjoys a few days together until they get a visit from Wyatt. Carla informs Odd that the coroner had finally released Stormy's body. It dawns on him that he's been holding back Stormy's ghost. Odd already knew that Stormy died when he saw her at the counter, but he couldn't accept it. Wyatt encourages Odd to let Stormy go so that she can move on to the next life. Odd tearfully kisses Stormy and assures her that they'll see each other again. Soon, Stormy walks out of the apartment through the window and vanishes. Odd eventually heads to Las Vegas, where he intends to use his gift as he waits to see Stormy again. This is all for story recap for today. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Tell us in the comments if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Watch other of our videos showing on the screen and leave a like because it helps the channel. And I would see you in the next video. Goodbye.